Thank you for that introduction. And um, yeah, I'm talking tonight about hackathons and what can we do with them uh, for bioinformatics and what can they be? Uh, what can we do with them in general? So okay, I had to start googling hackathon. I've hosted a few hackathons at OICR. Uh, these have been sort of internal hackathons focused on Sequare and some new projects that sub projects that we're working on for Sequare. Um, but I really didn't do my due diligence there to find out really what is a hackathon and how should it be structured. So I was very happy to do this talk and, and spend some time researching that. Um, so of course, hack hackathon is a mashup of the term hack and marathon. Um, and it originally was was started um, in about 1999 or so. It occurred simultaneously with reference to some Java 1 uh, activities by Sun and also Open uh, BSD, where it was a, a, a term that was coined uh, to describe the work that they were doing to, um, I guess, uh, comply with a uh, cryptographic uh, export uh, regulations. Um, so that's the history of the term. Um, the general hackathon uh, usually starts with some sort of orientation talk. So some sort of orientation by a leader of the project that will tell you what is the overall goal? What are we trying to do here? What are the technologies we're using? Um, and following that or orientation talk is typically a, a time where people can get together, talk to each other, and form teams. And this is an aspect that I really didn't emulate in, in our internal hackathons, probably because the size of the hackathon was pretty small. Um, but as hackathons get better or, or bigger, um, you tend to have people form, uh, form up teams to tackle specific problems. Uh, so hackathons, of course, at OICR, our hackathons were not days, but hackathons can go from hours or days. So you can imagine a, a weekend retreat, essentially, a weekend hackathon. Um, and typically, the output is some sort of presentation. Uh, and there can be a competition sort of bend on this as well. So at the end of it, there might be awards, uh, there might be a judging panel, or there might just be a presentation of the output of each of these small little teams. And of course, as you can imagine, this is entirely fueled by energy drinks and pizza, which is awesome. All right, so problems tackled with hackathons. What are people using uh, this, this for? It's a relatively new you know, construct in the world of programming, so what's targeted? Well, you can have hackathons that target an entire platform. So there might be an Android or iOS or Google Chrome plugin or Linux uh, platform hackathon. Uh, for extending the system itself, maybe, probably not on iOS, but uh, on other platforms extending the system itself or adding to it um, and adding applications for it. It might be a hackathon that focuses on programmatic uh, languages um, or APIs, so to extend or build on top of these APIs. And of course, for us, the most relevant one being uh, probably in this list, BioPerl or Python, um, and of course, Java and uh, Amazon Web Services and other things. These are examples of APIs or programming languages that a hackathon can focus on. Um, hackathons can also bring together other folks. They can bring together, you know, let's say a hackathon for teenagers that are just learning programming or other sorts of demographic groups. And the most interesting one, you know, I, I thought was, I didn't really think about this, but hackathons are actually uh, used by venture capital companies and other um, organizers to do rounds of funding and essentially pick out the best ideas and move those forward for funding. So, for example, there was, a, uh, I think the company is called GroupMe that was just pulled out of a hackathon and bought by Skype in, I think, 2011 for something like $80 million. So <laughs> apparently hackathons work. <laughs> I know, like, that'll be our goal. We're, we're going to get funded for $80 million, right? Um, OK, so maybe that goal is a bit lofty. Um, but still, it's an interesting sort of model. And of course, there's also hackathons that can be focused on a particular social good or a social cause. And in, uh, towards the end of the talk, I'll, I'll give a URL. There's a local group that organizes uh, hackathons uh, for, social, uh, for social effect. Um, and then finally, for us, we mainly have used it at OICR uh, for our internal project, the, the project that I've been focusing on with hackathons and getting other people that aren't within my group to contribute and give feedback on the project uh, is the Sequare project. Yeah, it's usually paid by pizza and energy drinks and the fun of it, right? I mean, that's the exchange. Um, OK, so how about hackathons and use in bioinformatics? And they've gone by many other names. I've been at conferences, and there's a lot of birds of a feather sessions and code fests and that sort of thing that all kind of follow a very similar sort of hackathon model. Um, the term biohackathon is, you know, comes up, and you can Google that. Uh, it's a mashup of biohack and marathon, of course. Um, and what I did is I actually found there's a group that does biohackathon.org. Uh, it, it seems to meet around Tokyo, sort of in, 
in Japan, and they meet on a sort of yearly basis. Um, but what was interesting about this group is going into their wiki, you can kind of see what were people working on. So for a biohackathon, what sort of things came out of the most recent one? This is the 2012 one that happened in September. And so there's just general themes that come up. There, was, there were teams that were working on feature sort of annotation. So genome annotation, data exchange file formats. It doesn't always have to be programming. Like you can actually use the hackathon model to come up with file interchange formats or uh, things like VCF files and GFF files and other conventions like that. Um, there are people hacking directly on BioPerl, BioJava, and extending uh, those systems. Uh, there are people working on ontologies, text mining, uh, software workflows and sustainable software uh, systems, which I'm really interested in from the Sequoia standpoint. Uh, database creation, database interoperability. Um, and then, of course, we also have teaching tools, which I think on the research side, I, you know, we kind of forget about that. But, you know, this is a, a good platform for creating tools that will actually let other people learn uh, about our software, about our research, about what we're doing. Okay, so I made this slide as I was actually sitting in a hackathon last night on PIG. So there's a Toronto Hadoop users group that's having sort of a, a regular series of hackathons that some of you folks might be interested in. And these are just some of the ideas that I came up with as I was sitting there for both an organizer and a participant. And I'm assuming there's people in the room that would want to be either of these or both of these at, at one point or another. Um, so for the organizer, I think what was particularly effective about this hackathon is they provided a getting started guide. So that helped bring everyone up to the same level and helped everyone get familiar with the technology. In this case, we were using PIG. Um, they also provided a VM. So with the very powerful laptops we have nowadays and virtualization technologies, that made it so much easier for everyone to be immediately productive in, in the session. Uh, and they also provided test data and tutorials to go along with that VM. Um, the, the, uh, the person that ran the, the hackathon helped the groups form. So he helped connect people with different interests or s similar interests. And the other thing that you know, is kind of overlooked probably by me in our hackathons internally on the OICR side is you've got to have like a good room. You've got to have power supplies. You've got to have stable Wi-Fi, things that make it easy for people to work together. And of course, uh, caffeine and pizza goes a long way. And then finally, I think the most important thing is to have a goal coming into it, um, to have an overall goal for what do you want people to get out of this, this experience. Um, for participants, the lesson I learned is make sure you set up your laptop before you come to a hackathon. Um, I spent far too much time getting ready to go. Um, the other thing is you know, to get familiar with the technologies whenever possible. I mean, the whole point of a hackathon that's different from a tutorial is it's a chance for you to actually code on a software project and make progress. So at the end of the hackathon last night, we had a ICGC data submission file format to VCF converter was our output. So I think having something like that, being ready to go and being able to have a well-defined task and an interest to come out of the, the hackathon is extremely useful. It, it helps improve your chances of, of a successful, um, uh, successful hackathon. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, make friends. It's a social thing. If we were all just coding, we wouldn't need to be in the same room with each other. So it's all about making friends that have shared interest with you in the community and exchanging business cards and getting to know each other. All right, so what are some resources for getting involved with hackathons? First of all, open source projects. How many of you guys are actually involved in an open source project by contributing code back or... Okay, how about users of open source projects? Must be almost everyone, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So of course, most of you have come across uh, GitHub and SourceForge. These are great sites for actually finding projects. Google um, has a similar, there are similar other sites out there as well. So that's a great way to get involved in open source projects in general. Uh, in terms of finding local sort of meetup opportunities, um, you can use sites like Meetup or there's groups on Facebook. There's a ton of other ways to find people, Google it and, uh, and see what pops up. Um, there are also usually satellite meetings for conferences, things like Bioinformatics Open Source Conference uh, is a satellite meeting for ISMB, uh, which is a great place to see what open source software is being created and essentially do these birds of a feather session. Uh, and then finally, here's some, some web links here. Uh, Meetup.com actually has a special portal to let you see hackathons in your area. There's, of course, the Biohackathon, which isn't local to Toronto, but it's a, it's a good resource. And then there's this uh, sort of ethical hacking group called, um, uh, uh, what is it? Let's see. I forget what the acronym stands for. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. But it's essentially a social active uh, group for, for hacking with a cause. Random hacks of kindness. Thank you, thank you. 
Um, okay, so shameless plug here. So I'm particularly interested in our open source project, uh, Sequare and ICGC DCC, which will get a sexy name at some point in the future. Um, but the technologies we're using are HBase, Elasticsearch, Cascading, Uzi, Pig, MongoDB, basically a grab bag of all interesting sort of like new big data uh, frameworks uh, that we're evaluating through these projects. So if you find yourself interested in, in these sorts of things, I would really like to take our internal hackathons and actually open them up to the community and see if we can get some open source developers contributing code through the hackathon series. Uh, so if you're interested in, in hosting or attending a bio hackathon in Toronto, I noticed that there isn't a dedicated bio hackathon group in Toronto per se. Uh, come and talk to me, talk to the, the organizers of, of this group, and let's see if we can get a somewhat regular hackathon going. I think that's pretty much it. If you are interested in these software projects, there's our GitHub. Uh, I think that's it, yeah. There's our GitHub uh, URL, and you can, of course, email me there as well. Great. Any questions or comments? or? It's definitely not just coding, right? I mean, it's just making file formats, it's doing databases, it's you know anything that you can imagine. Um, you can get it. That would be helpful to have a group of people together working on.